Feature writing. What is a feature writing and how is it different from news writing? In this lecture, we're talking about what exactly is feature writing. Uh, how does it differ from the hard news, uh, basic straight facts, news reporting? And what are some techniques and differences in feature writing that go into uh, good, good storytelling? So let's just dive in right here. First of all, a feature. What is that? Features emerged about in the 1960s when reporter Tom Wolfe was fed up in the, with the pale beige tone of standard news writing. This is a quote from him and it comes from his, uh, his uh, feature, his book on the new journalism. This is something that emerged, a movement that emerged in the 60s about really straying from the hard news basic facts reporting and being more of a storyteller and employing more of the literary techniques that you would find in fiction but applying those to nonfiction writing. Wolf has said that it has nothing to do with objectivity, subjectivity, or taking a stand. It was really more of a matter of personality, energy, and style in a word. And if you follow this link here in the PowerPoint that I'll provide, um, this takes you to uh, his account of how this new journalism emerged. It's a very good informative uh, accounting of how this, this movement or this new style emerged. And it was a really good, very insightful. Features focus on a creative writing approach to article article writing. They're still factual, they're still news, and they're still relevant. They're nonfiction, uh, but they are creative writing. Features take an in-depth look at a situation to a situation that may or may not be current issues in the news. They're still relevant, and they are still news, but may not necessarily be a typical breaking news or immediate news uh, situation. So what are they? Feature writing is basically human interest stories or soft news. Stories like personality profiles, business profiles, trends, or maybe reactions to trends, reactions to something in culture, spices of life, those how-to kinds of stories. These are, these are the essential focus or feature stories. What makes these different from hard news? First of all, they focus on the human interest, uh, human interest rather than the cut and dry hard facts of news. They use the active voice instead of the past tense like they do in hard news. It uses the past tense. For example, the votes were counted, the bills were passed. That's a hard news story. Features, the votes are being counted in hopes to pass the bill. That's an active voice. An active voice should sound like you are right there when the action is taking place. There are four uh, specific literary techniques uh, that are used in features, feature writing, and we'll get to that in just a minute. And they have specific grammar guidelines that differ from hard news. So what are the four different literary techniques that, that features use? Number one, they use realistic dialogue. Uh, in, in hard news writing, you use quotes, you gather quotes to help uh, other people, other sources tell the story of what's happening immediately around you or immediately uh, the story at hand. In feature writing, you can use quotes to create a dialogue to really draw readers into the heart of the story. In the same way, you can use vivid reconstruction of actual scenes. So if you walk into uh, a coffee shop, maybe your story is a, a local profile with someone and, and you're, you're interviewing them in a coffee shop. You can give a picture of the scenes around you to help tell a deeper meaning of the story or, or give more personality, uh, more insight to the personality that you're uh, profiling. Point of view, and now this isn't talking about opinion, it's really talking about the point of view, uh, is it first person point of view, second person point of view, or a third person? Hard news is often written in the third person point of view. We never use first person or second person in hard news. In feature writing, you have more uh, flexibility. You can often use, uh, features often use a second person point of view uh, in, in addressing you, the reader, and drawing you into the story. Details are used in feature stories and telling details, details that give the heart of the story or kind of give a little clue to what the story, uh, maybe a deeper meaning of the story or gives you clues into the personality that you're, uh, the person that maybe you're talking to. Things like what are they wearing, what are their surroundings, uh, gestures or, or some things that, that kind of give a symbolic resonance to your entire story that really give a, like maybe a running theme to the overall story, the bigger picture that you're, you're uh, describing. Some grammar guidelines. In, in hard news, uh, you would never use contractions and you don't use slang normally. Um, but in, in feature writing, you have more flexibility. You can bend the grammar rules when it's appropriate. Now, I always say if you're going to bend grammar rules, there has to be a motivation for it. You can't just break them for the sake of, I didn't know that was the right rule to, to use. There has to be some kind of motivation, a dramatic effect that you're using 
uh, when you break a grammar rule, but you have the flexibility in future writing to do that. Voice and tense, we just talked about the, the present, the, the second person that are often used in future writing, uh, and they're written in the present tense. Details and description, we just talked about that. The powers of observation, putting the reader in the scene. And I really encourage writers to, to really, uh, Work on your powers of observation and, and surround and looking around and seeing what's going on around you and how does what's going on around you tell help you tell the story at hand help readers find a deeper meaning in what's going on and using maybe there's something that's symbolic of this story that you're telling and you use that detail uh, kind of use it as a theme to wrap through your entire story all the way to the end these are the things that you can use um, in in observing what's going on around you. Um, other dramatic techniques of recreating inner, or inner monologue, um, no matter what kind of other dramatic technique, technique that you use, you still have to be factually correct. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily want to get inside the brain of a subject, but if you're reporting and you're doing good reporting, you can recreate perhaps what was going on in their head when they made, hey, what happened when you pulled that gun out and threatened to shoot someone? Um, what, maybe what was going on inside their head, you, but you have to talk to the person and and get a sense of, of, of what was happening so you can be factually correct about what was going on. Feature story structures. Generally speaking, the inverted pyramid that is in hard news is not used in feature writing. You have a lot more flexibility. Uh, you can be a lot more creative. Um, you can set the scene in the very beginning and then draw readers down into your story. This is a sample uh, structure, uh, but the idea is that you're using the, the basic storytelling um, method, which is the beginning, middle, and end. You have you introduce your story, you set your scene, and then you build this this action to a climax, and then it falls, and then you wrap it up to a conclusion, and, and wrapping it all together to tell a whole story. Uh, news versus features. Uh, features generally take a creative approach, approach, and in their beginning, in their intro, and in their in their lead, they don't necessarily have to address the five major questions. Uh, rather, they look at uh, to they look to really hook your reader in. We just talked about that. News can use the creative approach, but features really focus on um, hooking your readers in. Uh, these are some samples, uh, and I'm not going to click into these because uh, if you're looking at the PowerPoint, you can check these out. Um, but these are some great samples of feature writing where they use detail and description and symbolism throughout their story to really to to grab the heart of the reader and to pull them into the story and give them an experience more than just telling them something factually happened. Tips for successful feature writings. Uh, one, write tightly. Don't use words that you don't need to use. You can um, cut the fat, like I like to say as an editor. There's a lot of many writers, especially beginning writers, uh, use five words when maybe they can use one word. Stronger verbs rather than adjectives. Vary your sentence structure. Uh, sen writing is often like writing a musical score. There's a music to writing. When you vary your sentence structure, there's a rhythm to your writing that you can really find and finding your uh, finding that rhythm. Match your treatment to the topic, so you have to be careful about the tone that you're using. If it's a serious story, you don't want to have a, a light tone to it. Don't overdo it. Uh, avoid the first person stories. Sometimes you can get into a first-person narrative, uh, like if it's a travel story or something, but generally you avoid the first person. Um, you always want to stay objective. The principles of good journalistic practices still main true, still hold true in feature writing, so you want to stay objective. Um, you can use shorthand. These are just some tips for, for actually taking notes. Use a tape recorder. Uh, of course, if you're going to use a tape recorder, make sure you ask permission. Uh, you don't want to do it secretly, uh, but it does help you if you're not able to capture quotes uh, accurately. Um, finding your voice, and what I always encourage write writers is to read, read, and read. If you aren't reading good features, learning from other writers, if you're not reading widely, you know, about events, about history, about whatever it is, if you wide and, and thorough in your reading. Uh, re if you want to be a good feature writer, read feature, read feature writers to get a good sense of what they're doing and how can you apply what they're doing to your own writing. Some more tips. You want to get a full picture. We talked about observing. Interview your subjects, peers, supervisors, religious mentors. Uh, if you're talking to, if you're 
um, doing a profile story, you want to get a fuller picture, uh, talk to the people who know this person, uh, include illustrative anecdotes that paint word pictures uh, to give uh, a more um, detail about who this person is, uh, use your observations that we talked about, practice good interviewing skills and listening skills. And another thing that I always encourage writers is to show, don't tell. Let the narrative and the quotes and the scene descriptions show us what's going on rather than just telling us what's going on. Don't just say, um, Mary was really sad. That's telling me. Describe what she was thinking. Describe what she was feeling. Describe what she was saying. Describe her, the, her countenance um, that shows how sad she was. That, that even maybe gives motivation to why she was sad. This is showing and not telling. Right? Sensitively, when you're, when you're doing a story on something that's maybe sensitive that involve relationships, consider how you want to present that and being sensitive to your subject. Ask permission from your subject when you're writing a feature. Um, this builds trust with your audience and it builds, of course, trust with your sources. Um, sometimes you don't want to identify people by name. Now, this would be something that you'd have to discuss with an editor, but sometimes it's... Uh, for the sake of sensitivity, you want to be careful about not identifying people, especially children. We're not, we're not, uh, from an ethical standpoint, we're not supposed to identify children unless the parents get permission. Right? Legally, no libel, slander, invasion, privacy laws. Uh, make sure you understand media law. When in doubt, if you don't, if you're not sure you can do it, don't do it. And of course, maintain your ethical standards uh, uh, when you're writing. Don't change a quote. Uh, don't insert insert language that maybe wasn't there. Don't make up things. Those those all uh, basic uh, ethical principles when you're writing. And so these are some basic tips uh, that you want. Uh, there's a bunch of other resources, uh, but the bottom line is, if you want to be a good feature writer, read good feature writers. Keep reading. Read wide. Read long. Read deep. Uh, the more you read, the more um, your brain is informed, your mind is informed, and your creative writing is informed. Uh, you can read good literary uh, fiction, nonfiction. Um, like I said, read wide and read read deep, uh, and read good good writers and 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 observe what they're doing to inform your own writing.